Hey, a note before you watch this video, if you haven't seen the first video, Moron Explains Halo CE, you might want to watch that first because a lot of the jokes in this video are not going to make sense. But I'm not your mom, so you do whatever you want. All right, let's start. The game starts with the Covenant Corporate Meeting. These guys are the big cheeses. They're called Prophets because they are motivated by money and money only. Covenant. All the guys over here are the time shareholders. They're angry at this elite because they lost their investment when he failed to prevent the destruction of the Hula Hoop Vacation Resort at the hands of Halo and Cortana. He defends himself by saying that he had to focus on the crisis created by the Wi-Fi being knocked out and the tourists getting food poisoning and only found out about Halo's intentions to destroy the ring until it was too late. But the shareholders ain't having it. They decide to fire his ass. Back with the humans, a marine is chewing out Halo's ass for shooting innocent tourists back in the ring. Halo lies and says it was because his eyesight was bad and he thought they were zombies. The marine checks his eyes with an optometry machine. Halo's getting nervous because he was doing too well in the test, but then Sergeant Badass comes to get Halo before the marine can find the truth. Then they catch up a bit. Hey Sergeant, uh, how did you survive the explosion? Oh, well, and did I see you grab an elite's ass? What? No, of course not. Is that how you survived? Did your boyfriend give you a ride off the ring? Uh, let's talk about this later. Then they meet with Lord Hood, the most hood marine. So. Aw oh, shit, what's up my homies? He gives Sergeant Badass an award for being such a badass and gives condolences to Miranda Keys, Captain Keys' daughter. Yo, I'm sorry dog. I heard he was a great dancer though. I know. Meanwhile, the elite who just got fired is trying to cheer himself up by trying out some new kinks with some BDSM guys he met on Craigslist. Halo kills some astronauts, helps control the ship's pest problem. Then he finds a Covenant nuke and decides to try something he saw in a movie once. <laughs> Good. After that, he gets deployed to defend Earth from the Covenant, who want revenge on the humans for destroying what was going to be their best timeshare investment. For a second, he forgot what he was supposed to do and started illegally drag racing with the Covenant. Then he remembered that he was supposed to be killing the Covenant and came back to the drag race with a tank to blow them up. Halo destroys the Covenant army and their giant Cyclops insect robot, which makes the Covenant retreat. But the humans, like the warmongers that they are, don't accept anything less than total annihilation as a victory. So they pursue the enemy ship into the wormhole they escape through. Meanwhile, the elite's BDSM buddies are worried about their new friend's emo behavior and want to help him get his job back. But he's so depressed they have to drag him into the office to ask his bosses for another chance. They said that they would take him back but on one condition. He has to wear the orbiter armor as a badge of shame and he has to take on more dangerous jobs but without the hazard pay. He accepts the terms. His first mission as the orbiter is to track down and kill a treacherous elite who embezzled money from the company. The badass Covenant shipmaster who can somehow still talk with half his face missing is all like, I know you got rehired and you're the will of the prophets, but these elites, they're my homies. Their lives matter to me. Yours does not. Then the orbiter's like, That makes two of us. The Orbiter Gum Man pursued the embezzler in a spaceship, but then realized that that was a bad idea because he didn't know how to fly it. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. But he survived and he caught up to him. The supposed traitor said that he did not embezzle the funds, but rather took back the money that the profits had stolen from the 401k plans of their employees. The questionably sober robot butler was there to back up this claim as he was a nerd and had analyzed the company's financial data. The Norbiter was ready to consider the possibility that this was true, but the traitor figuratively shot himself in the foot by literally shooting him in the face, which forced him to return fire. To fight the Orbiter, the traitor used holograms that somehow fired real bullets. Even though they're holograms. How the fuck does that work? The Orbiter kills the traitor and his BDSM buddy Torturous. Get it? Get it? Because he likes to torture people? Shows up and turns out that he's weirder than the Orbiter originally thought because he has a thing for robots and he gets rough with the robot butler. Back with the humans, they made it out of the wormhole and they find another giant hula hoop floating in outer space. Miranda decides to capture it so that she can become a professional hula hoop dancer and fulfill her father's dream. The Covenant, of course, want it as well since this is the perfect opportunity to regain their losses from the first ring that was destroyed. Halo kills their leader, the 
prophet of remorse who's infamous for getting rich off of only refunding 80% of people's money when they return their shares after experiencing buyer's remorse. The Covenant fire on his position and he takes cover by jumping into a lake because a couple of feet of water is totally going to stop a nuke. Then he gets kidnapped by some hentai tentacles. Because the Prophet of Remorse was killed on the Elite's watch, the Prophets gave all the Wookiees a promotion while knocking down the Elite's a pay grade. In order for one to claim the Hula Hoop Resort for themselves, one needs to find a master USB in the library like the one that Halo had used to fuel Cortana's drug addiction in the first game. That USB has all the security codes for the resort and most importantly, the Wi-Fi password. Now the Orbiter raced the humans to the USB. On his way there, he faced robot butler butlers who did not want the USB to be misused like it was last time. Except now they had swole robot butler butlers. Not only that, the angry tourists were back to claim ownership of the Wi-Fi. Miranda beat the Orbiter to the USB but she was overpowered in combat. Torturous took the USB for himself. The Orbiter got angry and was like, hey, it was my job to get that. When the prophets find out about this, they'll fire you. Then Torturous says, when they learn. <laughs> Fool, they ordered me to do it. In that moment, the Orbiter realized how he had been used and betrayed by those he trusted. His bosses rehired him without hazard pay just to get the USB and then ordered Torturous to get rid of him. Torturous had turned him into his lover just to gain his trust and lead him to the USB and once he was gone, he was going to take over his position at work. At the same time that the Orbiter fell into the physical, deep, dark pit that Torturous pushed him into, he also fell deeper inside his emotional pit, and he became more emo than ever before. Now the hentai monster has both Halo and the Orbiter and he says that he's going to turn them into his sex slaves, which he has already done to the robot butler from the new ring and the Prophet of Remorse. Halo does not want to turn into this thing's sex slave. The Orbiter, on the other hand, is considering the offer. But Halo offers to let the monster use the Wi-Fi password on the USB so he can watch hentai if he lets them go. The monster agrees and teleports them to different places to look for the USB. Halo gets teleported inside the Covenant corporate headquarters. Word about the Prophets embezzling the 401ks got out, which caused a civil war within the Covenant. Cortana was glad to stay on the sidelines as the Covenant killed each other, but then Breaking Benjamin came on and that was Halo's favorite band, so there was no way he wasn't going to start kicking ass to the soundtrack of Blow Me Away. The Prophets give Torturous the USB which will let him activate it and claim the resort as their own. They get attacked by the hentai monster's deformed babies. One of them latches onto the Prophet of Mercy and chokes him. Torturous was about to help him but the Prophet of Regret was all like, nah he's fine, he's into that shit. And Torturous is like, okay. Halo blasts his way through all the underpaid corporate drones but he isn't fast enough. Torturous takes off in his ship with the USB. The Prophet of Mercy then asks Halo if he wants to join in and make it a threesome. He's like, you sick fuck. And he kills the deformed baby which also kills the Prophet. Then he gets attacked by more tourists. Just in case they can't stop the Covenant from activating the USB for themselves, Cortana comes up with a plan to overload in scantily clad's engines to destroy the ring and cover up Hale's heinous murders. But she doesn't want to chance a remote detonation, so she insists that she be left at the Covenant headquarters. Halo wasn't sure what that was supposed to mean. Why would a remote detonation be riskier? Isn't it riskier to leave Cortana there where she might be captured by the Covenant or the Wi-Fi deprived tourists? Maybe she meant that there wouldn't be a good enough signal for the command to reach the ship. But couldn't they just use signal amplifiers or something? I mean, Wi-Fi amplifiers exist, are you telling me we don't have a more advanced form of this technology in the year 2500? But Halo is whipped as hell and just like last time, he listens to her and leaves her there, which gives Cortana the chance to do what she really wanted to be on the ship for, which will snort all of its data like it was cocaine. Meanwhile, the Orbiter is hot on Torturous's tail. Along the way, he runs into Sergeant Badass. Orbiter asks for his help, eager for another chance at clapping some alien ass cheeks. Sergeant Badass uses a Cyclops robot to help the Orbiter get into the fortress where Torturous is about to activate the USB. The Orbiter tries to convince him that the Prophets are the bad guys as they embezzled money and manipulate their employees to get them to turn on each other for their own benefit. He says that if he quits his job then he'll forgive him and they can be lovers again. Torturous declines and starts the process of activating the USB. The Orbiter is forced to kill Torturous, a bittersweet victory. Miranda stops the activation of the USB in the nick of time. Halo finds a sweet ride so he carjacks it and rides it back to Earth to impress all the shoddies. When Lord Hood saw him in his new pimpin' ride, he questions him. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing with that drip? Sir, styling on these hoes. 
Unfortunately, this meant Halo forgot Cortana back at Covenant headquarters, which means she's all alone with the hentai monster who didn't get the Wi-Fi as promised. Cortana knew she was as good as fucked. Literally. And roll credits. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Support the channel, click the buttons, you know what to do. And I'll see you next time. Damn, who that has a motherfucker done the street? Oh shit, that's me, and I'm about to make life my best. They know what's up in this one man, war machine. Two in the head, one in the chest, fucking clean. Top tier badass, sensing to the 